All right. Welcome everybody um, to another installment of Hymns of the Heretics, a um, cult divinity lost um, uh, campaign. And we are hosted by the lovely Jonathan Dupree at this uh, Mind of Mine, and um, today is our first session. So we have spent some time talking about who our characters are, where they live, um, what their world is like, and um, and um, now we're kind of ready to get into the, the action of things. Um, all right, so as a reminder, uh, Cult Divinity Lost is a game that features some possibly not safe for work themes, um, some horror themes. Um, there may be um, references to... Um, Let me get a content note list. Uh, so some disturbing topics like family violence, religious bigotry, mental illness, death and dying, illness, body horror, spiritual abuse and manipulation, and emotional abuse. So um, please, uh, folks that are watching, folks that are playing, uh, be sure to take care of yourselves. All right. Is this music too loud? Uh, players? No. Mm -hmm. okay. I just adjusted it on my end. Okay, perfect. So, it is... Um, 2022 2021 uh it is the blazing uh hot uh and sunny texan summer uh you're out in the hill country so it's not humid um but it is painfully hot. Uh, temperatures, you know, reaching 90 to 95 degrees on a daily basis. Uh, sometimes stepping out of the house just makes it hard to breathe. Um, today is Saturday. It's uh, a, um, a typical summer church day for you and you are riding along in um, a air-conditioned van. It's comfortable enough inside, um, but there's always um, a little strange feeling nagging at you whenever you're on your way to church. You are all uh, riding in a separate van. Let's start with Freya. Um, Robin, can you describe your character, what she looks like, what she's wearing to church? Uh, sure. So Freya, this is not her usual style sense, but she tries to be good at church um, to appease her parents. So she's wearing um, like a white tank top with a black cardigan kind of thrown over top of it and um, not jeans, but like a pair of black slacks and some black boots. So yeah, she probably looks a little goth, but it's fine. Interesting. Okay. And um, let's see what... Uh 
what is on your mind today, go ahead and open up your sheet mm -hmm. and uh, roll for your disadvantages. All right. All right. Um, I'm, I'll make a note of your partial success uh, with um, Object of Desire. I'm going to take one hold. And then with your obsession, um, it is... Uh, um, you're overcome by your obsession for the moment. So you are sitting in a van surrounded by the other faithful of your church. Um, what does it look like when your will breaks and you give in to your obsession? Um, actually, I think it was a success for obsession. Oh, was it? You over you overcome your obsession for the moment. Okay, beautiful. So you are safe for now. For okay. now. Um, let's see. Willow, the bus, the van, the van trundles along um, the hot Texan pavement. Um. Let's see what your disadvantages look like. Um, you have one that you should roll now, which will be Liar. Well. Hmm, interesting. For the moment, you oh can you go ahead and describe your character and uh, what they're wearing sure um so willow is uh, male presenting but non-binary uh long hair kind of gentler features uh suit and tie very very like official church wear buttoned up to the neck uh whole whole deal ready to go to church sweating profusely because it's 90 degrees outside uh but Still, well dressed. Willow really wants to make a great impression. Absolutely, that's that's what it's all about is the impression. Got it. All right, um, let's look at James K. Um, go ahead and roll for your. Um, Disadvantage. Harassed. Did it roll? Yep. It rolled. Partial success. Y'all are doing really good. I don't like it. <laughs> so, nobody's really bugging me in the way there. Nope. We're only two minutes in. We can't do too bad yet. So, tell us about... Uh, James. Uh, tweed jacket. Um, it's summer, you said? Mm hmm. Yeah, probably um, just like a light cotton shirt um, and tie. Um, kind of just looking out the window. Um, not really focused on anybody in the vehicle. Just kind of um, going through the motions. Got it. Uh, another van, um, you know, uh, uh, begins to near the church. Uh, let's see, Marsha, uh, can you go ahead and roll your Oath of Revenge? Fail. A failure. Okay. So you have been through a, a hard experience before you moved here to B Caves, Texas, um, and became a parishioner at Sweet Creek uh, Restored Church. 
uh, what floods your mind um, as you are uh, kind of, you know, stuck in this van on your way to church? She's a little obsessed with following her ex and her church online on their Facebook page and Twitter and stuff. And I'm going to assume she saw, you know, how welcoming they were to her ex coming back and, you know, like he did nothing. And so the fact that they're just like welcoming, welcoming him with open arms. And, and he's back with his new bride. Yep. With his new bride and the same old church we grew up in, but everyone loves him. So what are you going to do to express your outrage? She wants to create fake accounts and say disparaging things about his new bride. Like what? Maybe that heard that she was previously hooked on drugs. Ooh, okay. Starting rumors about the bride. Mm -hmm. What's her name? Tiffany. Tiffany. Wow, that's pretty. That's not very Christian behavior, Marsha. But um, you uh, notice that some of the other kind of uh, parishioners in the van with you are kind of glancing at your phone, but um, you don't really know if they're able to see what you're doing. Can you describe your uh, Marsha's appearance and what she's wearing? Marsha would be wearing like a floral sundress, but it like completely is like to her neck, you know. So you definitely can't mm -hmm. see anything. Everything is covered. She's um, very modest. Very modest, but it will be like a pretty floral sundress uh, that she believes everyone should be wearing to church on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everyone's nearly to the church now. Uh, let's see. Josh. Go ahead and roll for your obsession. Okay, partial success. I'll take a hold. And you have Obsession, and what's the other one, Zach? Nightmares. Ooh, nice. It's a popular one. It seems like an easy one for a sleeper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. So, you, um... You all make it to uh, to church, uh, Josh. What what does uh, what do you look like? What are you wearing? Uh, I imagine it's just a button down in jeans, but the button down is tucked into the jeans, and it's buttoned all the way to the top. Mm -hmm. No tie, <laughs> just like trying his best to be good church boy in the country, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, but not quite right. Because <laughs> he's not from here. Yeah. You look a little weird compared to like Willow or James who mm -hmm. were raised raised in it. Correctly. You were you meaning to say correctly. <laughs> correctly. Right. Alright, so the five of you um arrive at church. Um there's dozens of people filing into the um, into the building. Josh, you are accompanied by your elderly landlord and roommate, um, Ethel Bauman. I would 
uh, everyone, uh, all the vans arrive pretty much at the same time, the five of you. Um, who goes in first? And what do you do when you go in? I'll probably just move towards my seat, and it's a good seat, and I always try to get it, and I'll get it, and I'll just be towards the back and sit. And um, I don't know if they take our phones or not. Um, well, you would remember that um, your phone has an application on it um, that will track you. Um, that is especially um, that is especially active during the sermon, so they probably won't take your phone. Okay. Would you be on your phone during the sermon? I don't think so. Not the so. sermon, no, just at the beginning. You said, like, who enters okay. first. So, yeah, I sit and wait for, like, everything to start. And in the meantime, I'm just kind of on my phone in hopes no one's talking to me. Got it. Okay. And I think Marsha would be eager to walk in. She wants to get a good seat, you know, near the front. Yeah, near the front to kind of catch some of that glory, right? From the from the, uh, the preacher, from um, all the, you know, important people that sit near the front. Okay, Marsha makes a beeline for the front. I think I would as well. Um, I don't know if anybody was raised Catholic or has gone to church. There's always 10 minutes at the beginning where everyone's like, oh, good morning, and shakes hand, and oh, good morning. And so that, mm -hmm. I'd be right in the middle of that. Like, I know everybody's names saying hello, getting pictures, like, being very present. That's the bit I'm avoiding. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, the more social congregants are like, hi, good morning, oh, it's great to see you. Well, or, hi, good morning, it's good to see you. <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on let better. me turn it on. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, y'all ain't been in, in, in a couple of weekends. Where y'all been? Mm -hmm. um, I'm and... absolutely calling people out that haven't been here. Okay. Um, oh, um, so you, uh, actually, Willow, you run into um, a woman named uh, Eugen Culver. Uh, Eugen is... Uh, probably close to maybe like her 60s early 60s um she is um the wife of you of like your your most um the wife of your most uh, like a uh, revered leader and prophet um let me see if i can get her on the screen for y'all Um, she is very uh, modestly dressed with kind of like long hair that's graying and she approaches you um, well hello Willow it's good to see you again um, I, I wanted to ask you a little question you you had told us, or well, you had told me uh, last week that you were going to bring five or six new people. Uh, you already had them uh, confirmed for last week, and they didn't come. And I don't see anybody new today. Yeah, um... About that, so they they were confirmed. Uh, I can even give you their names and contacts if you want to uh, uh, reach out to them. But they they ditched. They didn't tell me why. And I, I'm assuming I have no names and contacts. But I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that going. Well, you do understand, Willow, that it is the duty of. Uh, congregants such as yourself 
to keep track of all that. Um, if you want to please, um, if you want to please Isaiah, then you will do better. Of course, uh, I, I will get back with them. I will figure out what happened, um, and and they will be here uh, just as soon as possible. And Willow's going very red. Remember that it isn't enough for you to believe fervently. You have to spread the gospel to those that are ignorant of it and lead them here. If you fail, you will burn sure as any other uh, so-called Christian. I will, uh, I will, I will get on this just as soon as the sermon is over. Uh, the new congregants uh, under my name will be will be joining us shortly. You will do better. I'm sure of it. And um, she wanders away. Um, oh, Cole's not here. Okay. So, um... Marsha, right up at the front. Willow, at the front. Face, uh, red, blushing. Mm -hmm. Um, Josh. Ethel is kind of using you as like a... Yeah, I imagine I'm most of her crunch. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, where I can't imagine she pushes towards the front, but I also can't imagine she sits in the back. We're probably like four or five rows in towards an edge of an aisle. He's doing his best to just like keep his head down and politely nod and morning, 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 morning. You know, <laughs> just like avoiding any real answers. Just morning. Yep. Here with Ethel. Morning. Yeah, every once in a while, Ethel will stop and have, you know, kind of like a long conversation about nothing mm -hmm. with someone. Oh, yes, I saw you down at the market the other day, and yes, you were, you know, just like... Mundane bullshit. Mundane, yeah. Church talk. Um, I like how Willow has already started the tradition of, like, the token being on its side. <laughs> Wait, have I? I thought right. you did that intentionally. You did not do that intentionally. <laughs> so for anybody who wasn't in the last campaign, my character was just always broken all the time, and I accidentally <laughs> turned them around, and then I just could never fix it. So that just became my character, and apparently it's following me. <laughs> I'm sure it's just, fine. This is just how you play the game, man. This, this is just me now. <laughs> it's all good. Um, okay. Uh, Freya, uh, you are probably one of the last to enter, I'm assuming. She literally waits until it seems like no one else is coming and they're about to start, <laughs> like, right outside the door, just biding her time. And then she goes in and sits wherever the last seat she can find. It's It's probably near the back, you know. You know what? We're going to say that, like, it's full. It's packed. There's no more seats. <laughs> You're standing All right. up against the back of the wall. So, like, that's, like, a real kind of, you know, mark of shame. Um, <laughs> standing up against the back wall. Uh, in your kind of little gothic outfit. Mm -hmm. um, you stand out and you're immediately approached of course by um another of the church wives the i'm sorry the the leaders wives 
Um, this is Nayeli Young. Another one of the... Um, are y'all able to see? Oh, wait. Yeah, oh, no. I can see that now. Okay. Um, she is younger, um, maybe, you know, in her about to be 40. Um, she is, as you know, as far as folks can generally tell, a Latina. Her uh, hair is kind of cut into this short bob. Um, and she's also wearing very kind of like a demure, but but expensive looking blouse and um, a uh, modest, but again, expensive looking skirt. Um, she approaches you, um, Freya. Hi, Freya. It's good to see you. Uh, has it, were you here last weekend? I can't remember. Freya's just going to try match and be like, it's so good to see you too. You know, I, I think I forgot, not forgot. I'm sorry. I misspoke. I... I had so much work to do at school. It, you know, I'm trying to better myself for our community, and I just couldn't make it. There was too many exams, too many, just too much homework. You are a great example for the young women of our community. Um, but remember that a woman's greatest role um, is not as a you're studying to be a, a teacher, right? Or an artist or something like that? Yeah, I, I'm studying... I'm actually studying English, language arts. You oh, know, languages. I... Uh, language arts, yes. So that's important. But the most important thing of all is to prepare to be good wives and mothers. And there's no better place to learn that than here. Freya has to try not to, like, laugh because she has no plans to be a mother whatsoever. Um, and she doubts her ability to be a wife. Or not her ability to be, but her decision to be a wife. Mm -hmm. So, she's just kind of smiling. She's like, you know, you're right. I, I really need to be more uh, devoted to the cause. I really need to freshen up on what makes a good wife, what makes a good mother. It gives me so much pleasure to hear that. Look, I know that you're young and this place is not fashionable or um, cool, <laughs> but you're going to hear something today uh, during the sermon it's going to blow your socks off. You're going to want to come back every weekend. I promise. Something all the young people will, will think is, is amazing. Freya smiles a little wider. And she's like, yes, I'm, I'm sure. I, I'm sure we'll be flocked next time. Even packed more so. I, you, you give me such inspiration, you and the church. I... I really can't be thankful enough that you have let me be part of this. Why don't you come to dinner tonight with me and <laughs> Melvin? Oh, she tries not to show it, but her face, like, falls for a second. And she's like, oh, yes, that would be wonderful. I, I have to see, I think I have an exam, you know, coming up soon. Well, you've got to eat. So you certainly can't study or take exams um, if you're not well fed. So um, just uh, I'll make sure that the van drops you off at our place after um, after church. Um, talk to you later. And she walks away. Freya just starts cursing under her <laughs> breath. Like, Fuck. Ooh, okay. Um, let's yeah, see. she doesn't care. She was that towards that's the like back? her worst nightmare. Yeah, that's towards the back. So, like, I overheard all that. Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> okay. wait. And you and Freya are, yeah, yeah. related. Yeah, 
Um, Wait, are you siblings? No, no, no. Uh, cousins. Cousins. Uh, cousins. Okay. Yeah, I'm just kind of uh, sympathetic, but I'm not involving myself. Like, I, I, I understand that she was trying to say things without saying things and, like, deflect. Like, I've probably been there before, but... Yeah, her showing up late obviously shows she's not a master of this yet. She'll get it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so the uh, sermon uh, kicks off. Um, it is, you know, at, um, led by the, uh, you know, very... Uh, very well known and kind of like famous in your um, you know in your community there are churches like yours all over the country and every one of them knows of Isaiah Culver who is like the the lead prophet the the one person who um, knows everything there is to know about um about how to live a good life, how to be a true Christian, and that knows all of the secrets, all of that special knowledge um, that is, um, all of that special knowledge that is um, guarded by by the the spiritual leaders of your of your community and um you know he's he's giving you the uh the fire the brimstone um and uh let it be known that across the land there shall be no church but the restored church and glory will come to all those that serve god under its uh sacred calling um you start to see at the very front other parishioners start to lose it One by one, every parishioner in the front row rises up out of their seats and exalts uh, in what you know is the language of angels. They've started speaking in tongues. If you believe in this faith, roll to keep it together if you don't believe in this faith don't roll yet marsha fails josh partially able to keep it together willow you fully keep it together marsha i want to hear you I want to know what it sounds like when Marsha is overcome by the spirit and she begins to speak in tongues. For Marsha, I don't think she would say words. I think she would just make noises. And whatever noise she heard them saying, she would emulate it like, oh, ah, ah. like she's, <laughs> she looks so fake. Okay, okay. Uh, Josh, you're able to um, kind of keep it together, but you are impacted by the the chorus, um, especially Marsha, who you know from work. She seems totally overcome by a, a spiritual exaltation. Um, it causes an emotional reaction in you. Um, which, what, what condition do you think you would kind of develop? Uh, 
I think he would be scared of the options. Like, he's not from around here. He believes in God, but, like, this is something else. Okay. <laughs> Josh Grant took stability damage. <laughs> okay. Uh, Willow, um, you... I'm going to give you the option. Um, you can start speaking in tongues or not. What do you think would happen? Good question. Because, like, he would, or they would very much want to be speaking in tongues. Like, they want to be a part of that. They want to be affected by it. But I think they wouldn't be. You don't think they would fake it? I, th I think they're too proud to fake it. Okay, so they do have some level of dignity. Interesting. They, they, they'd be really okay. mad and hurt and embarrassed that they weren't affected by it, but they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't but fake you know it. what? You keep it together, Willow. You grit your teeth. It sucks. You're not chosen. God isn't working uh, his sacred... Um, you know, his... God isn't working his uh, sanctity through you, and you hate that, but you're mm -hmm. not showing it. Okay. Um, oh, she should. Do I take minus two or minus four? Uh, two. Okay. Okay, so for those of you who are not believers, so that's... Uh, right. Quick huh? addendum. I uh, so I feel like James has been through this before. This is probably mm -hmm. not his first rodeo. Mm -hmm. He's probably seen people speaking in tongues, and like he may have had a crisis of faith like the first time it happened. But yeah. I think at this point, like, so he's not a non-believer, but okay. he also is like a believer to the point where it's not what they are doing. Like he believes in God and is very spiritual. Mm -hmm. believe in this church so i think like what james is probably doing if unless he's got some you know check he needs to make is like since he's used to this and he's seen it before and he knows how it goes but he also knows it's kind of performative like mm -hmm. if you're not touched like this like you know it's obviously problematic he's yeah. not jumping into fake or anything but he's like his eyes are closed and he's kind of holding his hand up in the air like you know like you know you know the, the Holy Spirit with you kind of like, you know, situation, maybe quoting like, you know, passages yeah. that matter. And just in the back, basically, like, as a part of the congregation that hopefully nobody is going to pay attention to, especially if that's what other people near and around him are doing as well. I like this exercise because it's sort of sussing out who is more committed than who. So I see, I think... I think that James is not as a believer, as much of a true believer as he thinks he is. He does all of the rigmaroles, he checks all of the boxes, yep. but in the end, he's not going to allow himself to be swept up in the speaking of tongues, but he'll play along. That's it. That's 100% it. Okay. Um... And yeah, the first time for him was probably, oh. I'm sorry, the first time for him yeah, saying yeah. that was probably like a real crisis because like right. it didn't make any sense. And like, why would that be happening? And then like it happened all the time. And so he was just like, okay. Right. Well, okay. So, um, Freya. You see all around you uh, this outbreak of speaking in tongues. Um, it's, you know, you see your <laughs> your cousin um, a few rows down, you know, kind of playing along, has his hands up, he's touched by the spirit. Um, what are you doing? She is trying really hard not to roll her eyes. Um, and she's also looking at Willow. She's a little interested that they're so still right now, knowing how 
much they're devoted to the church, knowing how much they are involved in the church. She's seen Willow around campus, you know, has them for a class. But yeah, she's not into it. She's not doing jack shit. Okay. So, yeah, so um, I think you know that that's kind of noted by someone, right? Um, the fervor slowly de-escalates. Um, people kind of return to their seats. Uh, you know, old ladies whip out their fans. Um, there's definitely a... Li it's like everyone has kind of cut off oxygen to their brains for a little bit. So everyone <laughs> seems a little, like, a little loopy, a little fizzy. Um, and... Uh, the uh, the pastor uh, Isaiah Culver uh, says, "Well, uh, now that we have taken time uh, to pray to uh, to exalt the glory of the Lord." Uh, I want to introduce a very special speaker. Uh, you've heard him speak many times before, uh, and today he brings, uh, he's going to explain to you some, some special news from, um, the happenings of this last week, and, uh, without uh, any further ado, uh, our uh, member of the Council of Five, uh, Melvin Young, uh, Pastor Melvin Young. Melvin Young is uh, Nayeli's husband. Um, he is... Um, You know, in his 40s, uh, he's this very um, kind of well-trimmed uh, 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 and shaven, clean-shaven uh, white man with kind of like light brown hair, starting to go gray, um, in perfect shape, uh, thin, tall, a kind of like the ultimate example of the uh, kind of uh, pioneer man of uh, of the restored church. Um, you know, his face is probably on many of your pamphlets um, as you know a draw. Um, he uh, steps up to the pulpit and kind of looks around warmly, smiling big. Well, it is uh, great to see everyone today here at Sweet Creek. Um, today, I wanted to share with you all uh, news that is... Um, It's going to revolutionize all of our lives. I won't drag it out. This week, we have learned on the council that one of us uh, will not at this time divulge who has had true revelation from God. You hear gasps throughout the audience. Um, it has been known that prophecy was once a part of your faith, of your religion. In fact, your um, the founder of your religion in the early 1900s was a prophet, a seer, a revelator. Uh, but after him, the visions, the revelations stopped. 
it is true that today we can be uh, totally sure, totally c concretely faithful that one of us has received revelations from the Savior himself and has been delivered visions of heaven. The council asked me to come before you all today and to share what he has seen. Quick question. Yes. On the council, are there any females or is it all male? They're all men. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Okay, because I was deducing. I was trying to figure out if I could figure out who it was without him saying. There are... Um, in heaven only only those that have been baptized in our church only they may uh, uh, may reside there uh, eternally after death we know this this has been part of our uh, of our scripture since the the very start of Christ's ministry. But today we know that heaven has a place for many kinds of people. Yes, it's true. The vision brought before us confirmed that people with um, infirmities, people uh, of all races, believe it or not, are welcome in the sight of God in heaven. And the most shocking revelation of all, what will set apart our, our, um, our ministry from many others for the rest of time our brother who brought this vision confirmed the existence of a third heavenly gender in heaven people gasp people shout there's uh sounds of disbelief now now i know better than to think that some of you will uh think to question the teachings of our of our revelation this church going forward will change visions from heaven have caused our circle to widen. Does that mean that homosexuals will marry in this church? No. Does that mean that all transgender political agendas will be followed by this church? Of course not. Those are things of the world. But our church has always known that there are deeper truths, that there are mysteries unrevealed to us until the time is right, dictated by the will of God and the wisdom of our leadership. You notice, Willow, his eye wandering to you. I feel like I noticed just long enough before Willow's like bowed in prayer, like super happy to hear this and, and just thanking whoever. 
whoever, or... For Willow, God and the Council of Five and the Church yeah. and yeah, all of those involved. But for me, just whoever, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but for Willow, it's thank you, God. Thank you, Christ. Thank you, prophets. Right? Um, yeah, I mean, Freya, you probably have the sharpest, like, awareness of like Willow being this like um the the sharpest awareness, right, of like, you know, Willow's identity and um the way that they're identified at work versus like their experiences in the church. And you know that it is um it would seem very unlikely that this would happen here in your church. She doesn't you... buy it for a second. She immediately thinks it's just a way to gain more membership to brainwash more people. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? Words right out of my mouth. Oh. That's exactly <laughs> where my brain is. Yeah, Willow doesn't consider for a second that it's a ploy. They're, they're just, they're in it. What do you think James thinks? Yeah, so, I mean, James is, like, great. Like, um, cool, I'm assuming cool. Willow's been around for a while. And, you know, I've seen, like, you know, how they interact with people. And I guess he's just, like, okay. We're getting revelations now. It's probably the more like maybe that means there will be some changes around here, maybe for the better. Okay. But at the same time, like it's still kind of a similar kind of skepticism, like similar to how he relates to the speaking in tongues situation. It feels performative. Yeah. Okay. What's uh, Josh thinking? Probably still a little bit of fear and confusion. This is all a lot and not having come up in this. How is Ethel responding to this? Um, go ahead and roll. Read a person. There you go. Partial success. How do you feel right now? Confused. You read confusion on her mind. Um, you are... You have always kind of been in a church, right? As you've yeah. traveled. So you're aware that, like... Like, you know that transphobia and homophobia is kind of like a bread and butter in, a, in many churches. Mm -hmm. That's been probably more of a more um expected than not right so seeing it kind of like lifted uh has left ethel in shock and in confusion like she clearly you know would not expect something like this you don't notice a defiance of it right just confusion yeah like somebody like nobody's getting up and storming out yeah which is probably very strange for him like yes. looking for the people to get up and like where's the opposition to this <laughs> right and Freaking feeling <laughs> very uncomfortable with it yeah right uh what do you think uh marcia uh, what's on going through marcia's head Marsha's mirroring everybody else's reaction. Like, if they're excited about it, then she's excited about it. <laughs> she sees it as the prophet said, so, oh, totally, it's correct. But she's also ignorant in the fact that she's like, third heavenly gender, what is that? She's just going to pretend she knows what that is and just be excited. Fucking love Marsha. God damn it. 
Okay. <laughs> oh, um, um, Twitch. We forgot the promo. Next time. Oh, that's fine. We got like four viewers. It's fine. One of them is Elizabeth. Okay. Um. Church, you know, goes through its final motions um, as um, <laughs> church goes through its final motions as they um, as the congregation, um, you know, starts to um, to be released. Um, you know that everybody's going back to to the vans. Um, Melvin, uh, you know, as as things wrap up, says, "Don't forget, if you want to walk home, that's just fine. You you certainly can, uh, but remember, you have the convenience of taking the van back if you like." The church begins to empty. I think James today is going to wait for everybody to leave and then kind of try and get out without getting on one of the vans and take a walk home instead of otherwise. Okay. I think Willow is going to be like last on the van just because they're saying goodbye to everybody and trying to trying to just let everybody know that they're there. Willow, you notice people treating you with a little bit of a a, a stiffness. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, I think the people in your congregation have always known, you know, you're different or whatever and have been probably grappling with, you know, how you express your identity. Um, but there's something uncomfortable now that it's been acknowledged so publicly mm -hmm. um as far as you can tell you're like the only trans or non-binary person in this entire hall you know meeting hall or church or whatever so it's there's definitely a spotlight it feels like right i feel like that might not be super uncommon or at least when they first joined the church i'm sure there was a bit of stiffness or or oddness going on, but mm -hmm. they might have warmed up to them over time, but now it's just all back. Yeah, right. And, um, Freya, what, you know, you, there's this revelation, like, you know, you see people kind of still looking a little shell-shocked, um, Willow is, you know, making their way out. Um, your cuz is kind of hanging around. Freya is a little bit of a shit starter. So she's gonna go over to Willow and just say, you know, Professor Willow, like, I'm, I'm so happy for you. I'm so glad for you. And just kind of like, give a little look to the people that seem a little stiff and just, you know, really happy that you're you're being accepted. And she really is. She is happy for Willow. But at the same time, she just wants to, I don't know, just stir the pot a little bit. Yeah, you can't miss the chance to stir up shit, you know, even if you are happy for someone. Well, it's kind of like also like you're declaring your support, right, a little bit. And then mm -hmm. also kind of shoving it in their faces a little bit, like, ha, 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 you know, like. Yeah, like, this is a no-brainer for her. She's like, yeah. of course, Willow should have always been welcome. This is the, she's, this, right. Yeah, she's going to embrace this with open arms. It's like the one aspect. She, open arms in the sense of Willow fitting mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. Not so much open arms as her believing it. Right. Luckily, God well, spoke up, you know. Lucky yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think Willow's got like a like a huge grin on their face, and they're they're just really happy to be acknowledged. 
but then they turn around and there's like all the the church people who aren't happy about it and like they but they can't get rid of the grin <laughs> they're just like stuck in this awkward moment Another kind of interesting tidbit is that you're being kind of like lauded and acknowledged by Freya Collins, who is kind of like marked as, you know, she's the a black sheep. Of a black sheep, yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What would you do being uh, approached by a black sheep? I don't know, because, like, again, it's it's that level of acknowledgement, which they've been looking for for a long time, but also she's the black sheep. So it's... I, <laughs> Is I that the I'm acknowledgement below. you want? <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> it was like, like, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it, but, like, go away. Please, like, stop talking. I'll talk, I'll talk to you in class. Nice to see you. <laughs> Freya, you approach... Um... You approach Willow to give your support, and you are... Kind of met with a little bit of coldness, a little bit of a squirm. A little Freya bit of just a... kind of shrugs it all. She's used okay. to this. She knows okay. she's the black sheep. She kind of wears it like a badge of honor. Got it. Would make you feel bad though. No, like she she knows it. Like, you know, you don't walk in wearing all black and wearing probably dresses are preferred, I would imagine, or right. skirts are preferred. Um, but yeah, she knows this. So she's just like, hey, like a little hurt, but. Oh, yeah, used Freya's to it. wearing slacks or pants? Yep. Oh, that's definitely controversial. Don't worry. I'll be, I'll be very lenient on your next test to make up for this. So <laughs> study a little bit less and you'll be fine. Yeah, just. It's, that's fine. Right, Ethel. Um, I'm, I'm ready to go. Let's, let's get out of here. Sure. Okay. Guides are out. <laughs> you know. Um. So she's a slow walker. She's probably also kind of one of the last here, people kind of out. Yeah. Out. So out in the blazing heat, um, everyone starting to sweat, loading up into your um, loading up into your vans. Um, Willow, you are also approached uh, by Nayeli uh, and invited to dinner. I James. am uh, I'm very interested uh -huh. in going to dinner. Okay, perfect. Um, Can you put their name in chat, by the way, just so I know for spelling purposes? Yeah. Is this a practice that happens commonly? Like, does... No. Oh, okay. Then James wouldn't know to avoid it. So, go ahead. James, you are also um, invited to dinner. You are not pressured like Freya was, where it was like the van's gonna drive you. It's like, you can show up later for dinner. James will say, uh, well, uh, what are you having? <laughs> um... Nayeli looks like very amused by your question. Oh, um, we are um, making a uh, a big roast. It's Sunday. We're only supposed to have fish. Oh fuck! <laughs> oh man, oh, you uh -oh. got me. You Get fucking it. roll did. to keep it together. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I roll. The GM roll to keep it together and fail. <laughs> Just like, 
<laughs> Take one of those okay. big buses and drive everybody off. <laughs> so, um... But, no, he would ask if they're, uh... Roast fish. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, he'll say, um, yeah, well, I'll see about it. I, uh, I've got some things back at the office i got to handle, you know, someday, um, uh, everything with the, uh, the broadcast show and everything. But I, I, I really appreciate the invitation. Um, I'll, um, see ya. And he'll kind of start walking away from the van, like, almost as a point, at that point, trying to use that as a breach or an escape, uh, to get away from... Isaiah expects you to be there, James. See you. We'll see you in a few hours. Oh, well, um, yeah, fine. No problem. I'll do my best to speed through my work then. And I'll just walk off. Um, okay. Let me see. So... Freya, you're going in a van. Willow, um, are you going to uh, accompany Freya and go right to their, right to the Young's house, um, or are you going to do something else before? Uh, I definitely get right in the van, be ready to go. I, I'd probably be like, I'd have like a comb or something. I'd be trying to fix my hair. You know, make sure I'm, I'm very presentable. <laughs> so the golden congregant and the black sheep <laughs> the band together. Okay. Quite uh, a pair. James walking home. Um, Josh and Ethel loading up into the van. Um, and Marsha getting back in the van or walking home. You know it's expected for you to get in the van typically. Yeah, I would totally get in the van. Okay. Okay. So, um, a question regarding kind of uh, location, because I'm assuming yeah. there's going to be like an early dinner based on the poignancy. Mm -hmm. um, are they, is my house in between here and their house, or are they closer? Um, they live kind of like oh. far out of town. Hmm. Um, John, can you check Zoom? Sorry. Oh yeah, looks good. Awesome, you're so quick. Um, hi Andy, welcome. Hello. Okay, so you. Uh, My dad yet? Jonathan, not yet. So not yet. Uh, Definitely. Two, three more sessions. We got you. <laughs> the Youngs live pretty far out of town. Um, so you are closer to your own house than to their house. Okay. And I assume I have some sort of um, automobile or something to that effect. Sure. Okay. So then, yeah, I'll walk. You're not on. a broke. Are you a broke bitch? Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> so I would assume, too, that I'm going to walk my kind of backwards kind of path. And uh, James is a smoker. Um, so he will do so on the walk home and kind of stressing, like de-stressing. Cause like mm -hmm. that was a weird one, um, yeah. with everything that happened. Um, and also this now really awkward, um, thing that I'm being kind mm -hmm. of forced to go to by Isaiah, mm -hmm. I guess. So yeah, he is going to probably smoke two or three before he gets home. And then um, cigarettes, nicotine. Yeah, need it. Okay. And then he'll um, head on over. Okay, so um, let's let's rewind a little bit um, and decide how we want to play this. I kind of like the idea of of playing. Um, so, Cole, uh, welcome, Andy. You are Thank the you player behind Cole. Uh -huh. We penciled you in at the last minute. Thank you. Thank you. And um, so we just played out a scene in church. Um, there was um, 
prophecy, speaking in tongues. Um, would you like to play it that Cole was there kind of quietly watching or that he missed church? Let's say that he missed church. Okay. But his wife was there. Ooh. For shame. Um, For that shame. Is very shameful. You should feel that shame. Unattended. She went unattended. Oh, unattended. Absolutely scandalous. So you would receive a a church, a church. You would receive a text from your wife. Um. Very, very weird text. Uh. Like right as soon as church, like the time where you know church would be ending. Um, you receive a text saying they basically just like quote unquote allowed non-binary people or third gender people in church they said it's the result of a vision from God Cole. Text which can I text back? Wait, 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 Cole. Oh. Where are you? What do you look like? What are you wearing? Uh, uh so Cole is in his um like let's say early to mid thirties. Um he is wearing jeans and a t shirt. He's barefoot and he's cleaning up after breakfast that he made for their daughter Kaylee. She has the sniffles. That's why we didn't go to church today. Likely excuse. And he would <laughs> text back, shit, I missed that. That's that's awesome. Uh, you don't get a text back. You assume that your wife is on a, you know, is like on the on the van ride back. Home. On the van ride home, okay, because there's a van that comes to pick everybody else up, right? It's, it's, it's yeah. the wow, that's super creepy. All right, so um, I've got Freya and Willow on a van together, Marsha on her own van, Josh on a separate van with Ethel, Cole is at home, James is walking home. Um, yeah, and Cole's wife, Jenny, is, I guess, on the van going Jenny, home. Ooh, where do we want to put Jenny? Let's put Jenny in the same van as Marsha. All right. So, um, the vans are trundling back. The heat is searing. The, you know, the AC feels like it's barely, like, barely chilling the radiating radiating heat that you kind of got, like, just anchor to your body. And um, you... You all start to make your way back home um except in the middle of the ride you feel like all of you feel this this like shimmer or glint um a chill Josh, you kind of look around like, what the, what is that feeling? And you see Ethel has kind of fallen to the, like on her side in her seat and her body has started to like convulse. Her eyes have rolled up into the back of her head and 
you hear her talking in a language, like a clear language, words that you cannot recognize. At the same time, Marsha and Jenny, you see uh, two other um, two other congregants having the same experience. It looks like they're seizing, but instead of making kind of guttural noises or or you know just um, panting or gagging, they're talking in a language you don't understand. Uh, Freya and Willow. The two of you have that strange feeling and then jolt as um, your driver begins to have the same experience and the, vo the van swerves. Um, go ahead and roll to avoid injury or roll to avoid harm. Avoid harm. Avoid harm. Well, we did great. You did partial uh, success, uh, at least. Okay. Do we know, were these people speaking in tongues in the sermon as well? Um, hold on. Let, let, let's go beat by beat. So, Willow, gotcha. go ahead and roll to endure uh, injury with one harm. All right. Okay, um, you are wounded. Uh, you, so the the van flips. Um, you know, you try to grab onto stuff, uh, but your arm um, hits the side of the van, and your arm is fractured. And even as you reel from the pain, you can hear the driver. Uh, not snapping out of it, not, go, you know, fighting to right the van or to escape or to s save himself. You just hear him muttering and yelping and groaning the same words over and over. Um, Freya, you failed? Yes. Roll to endure injury, harm two. Hey. Despite uh, you uh, despite you being kind of like thrown around the van as it rolled, um, you are very lucky and you don't suffer harm. You rolled incredibly. Um, okay. And uh, Willow, you wanted to say, um, what was your question? You had asked a question. Yeah, if uh, the people are, I guess in our case, just this one person in the van that's acting up, were they speaking in tongues during the sermon? Um, roll. Let me see. You can roll an investigation check. That's wait, 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 wait. No, no. no. Um, roll observe a situation, and I'll ignore the questions. Twelve. Okay. So you recall that this person had not been speaking in tongues. Okay, so different isolated like, incident. Like you were looking around, right? And you know what it looks like when someone's speaking in tongues, right? You've seen it a thousand times. This driver dude is like, like he's he's sort of like a, uh, like a um, James, right? He comes to church, he goes through the motions, he's filled with the spirit. He's not speaking in tongues. He's like uh, a filthy casual. So you it's a you know it's a shock that someone like him would be doing that now 
Um, and the sounds that are coming out of him are not what it sounds like when people speak in tongues at church, typically. That's probably fine. And on that note, um, is it okay if we take a little break? Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. All right, yeah. perfect. We'll be back in four to five minutes.
All right, friends, welcome back. Um, we um, are experiencing uh, something weird and scary uh, on our way home from church, um, except for James, who's just hanging out with a heavy cigarette. By a walk in the woods. Taking a walk. Quick huh? question. So like I said, I'm kind of wandering off the side. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm off the beaten path, but am I close enough to hear like... <gasps> screeching of like a van rolling as it comes over. rolling off yeah, yeah. if that's a probability like cool if yeah not, like because i am Perfect. trying to avoid being seen too so like yeah yeah but i mean it's not like you're gonna be walking like deep into the motherfucking woods like you're gonna take a path that's close like a path. To right right road. like a little yeah. walking path yeah right um okay so so let's take a beat uh Cole, um, I would like for you to go ahead and roll for your disadvantage of guilt. Oh, oh my god, are you killing his wife? <laughs> Is that the car that flipped? Well, Jenny hit it. <laughs> That's not the car that oh. flipped. I really, I, I, I randomly ended up not being Jenny's car, but it was close. You were thinking about mm. it. That's what you get for showing up late. <laughs> it's a just punishment. As a fellow game master, I, I understand. Partial success. <laughs> okay. I am so. reminded of my guilt. G GM takes one hold. I will take one hold. What's your other one? Um, nightmares. So I will say depression and nightmares are very popular for this round. Uh oh. Um. Okay. So you. Um, okay. Nothing is happening. Hold on. All right just um i'm trying to be a little bit more like transparent with holds this round um e among the cult gm community they said that it's good to kind of talk about like okay when are they getting used up when are they coming in so that you can be afraid of them so freya and willow i used up your whole your holds not your holes <laughs> Cole and Josh, um, I still have holds for you. Marsha, you're safe for now. Okay. Uh, James, you're walking along the path, enjoying a cigarette, pulling out your phone, looking at stuff. Um, heading home. It's still Twitter at this point, right? <laughs> it would be. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank God. It's still Twitter. Um, I had it written down somewhere. I don't know. I had some... Oh, oh, oh. There's also um, a... Uh, for those of you that played in Buy Their Fruits, uh, remember that Arachne has its own social media platform. So mm -hmm. we're going to say instead of Twitter... You are using, um, oh no, I called it fun web. <laughs> it sounds arachne web, arachne web. So, um, the arachne corporation is, um, an international conglomerate that is based out of Houston and it produces social media, reality television, pharmaceuticals. Uh, bioweapons, um, all kinds of hell of a portfolio, <laughs> fun products, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> like they're, uh, we'll say that Arachne Web is like way more popular than Twitter. It's um, it's kind of edgy. It's got a great user interface, um, and there's these like it's. Uh, really has been popularized by this campaign uh, for wellness turned reality TV show about six uh, people who escaped a cult out of uh, Navasota and that developed um, really great wellness skills there was a little bit of drama you know some of them were power like you know wanted to have po more power in the house some of them uh wanted to like bring pets in the house which ew but um in the oh, end capitalism 
Well, I don't think they covered the cannibalism. Oh. Arachne Web did not air the cannibalism parts. Um, in the end, everybody made great recoveries and left the house uh, with hundreds of thousands of dollars in their pockets. So, uh, yes. Plus, anyway, go ahead. A quick question: Do um, does the church like search me? Like they don't search me, right? Like I'm I'm allowed to like the cigarettes. Obviously, I have them. You are not being searched. Okay. Uh, Freya might be searched. Cool. In certain circumstances, <laughs> um, but Just but no one's expecting knives and lighters and well, yeah, no one's expecting James to bring like a uh, fucking communist manifesto stuck into his pant leg or anything, you know? Sure, sure. I think I I, I uh, the reveal here as okay. like, like smoking, like instead of checking the arachne web, is I have another phone. <gasps> it's not a church phone. The reveal. Oh my god. Okay. And, and I keep up with like, you know, obviously like, I know that my my phone would be kind of scanned if uh, yeah, that were the case. But course. my character's uh, kind of like you know escape is uh, like forums, like Reddit and shit. Okay. Um, and being a filthy redditor, <laughs> and uh, so I'm assuming like that's not uh, you know allowed. So is I'm, it a burner phone? No. No, it's a phone. I, I, I have a phone. Um, it's um, cleverly um, in, um, you know, like uh, probably my dad's like name. So it's not easily tracked by the church. They're not going to look for a dead person's phone. And, uh, you know, I just keep it. And uh, it's not connected to the crazy, you know, um, stuff. And I use it to uh, keep up with my forums, just like I do with my computer at home. And the one at the office. Oh, okay. So the um, Arachne version of uh, Reddit is called Crawler. C R A W L R. Yeah, and like it, it's church sanctioned. That's church okay, right? The Arachne Crawler. No, absolutely oh. not. So um, Arachne I'm... Arachne is of the world. Yeah, so then I'm I'm on board for that then with my phone. I guess I'm more of a crawler fan than Reddit since it's like okay. canon and, and important, and Reddit's garbage. Uh, but if it's not allowed on like regular phone or like on our church phones, mm -hmm. that's what the burner phone's for. I, so I can check in on that stuff. Perfect. So you are having your cigarette. You're, um, you know. Uh, trawling your way through the garbage of Crawler and uh, you hear screeching tires loud metal crunch it's startling go ahead and roll to keep it together because it is a frightening sound it sounds really dangerous um there we go beautiful right. nerves of motherfucking steel bitch like you are you hear it, it's scary, but, you know, you, I don't know, maybe you're just too distracted by social media, I don't know, maybe you just have nerves of steel, and um, you see before you, on the road, um, a van rolling off the road, uh, wheels spinning, dirt flying, um and what do you do um i'm tossing the cigarette i'm quickly hiding the um the other phone and i'll kind of rush over um and assess the situation um if like there's leaking gas or like the possibility of like an explosion or anything i'm going to do what i can to kind of rush in to help who i can um i'm very uh like proactively trying to help who i can okay but i also am trying to make sure that i'm cognizant of like the possibility of like you know explosions or me being hurt because I'd rather that not happen. <laughs> yeah, of course. Go ahead and roll to observe the situation. Got it. Um... Uh, All right. Yeah. Great success. Go ahead and give me a couple of questions. Sure. Um. Uh, I guess what should I be on the lookout for when it comes to like 
possible threats or uh, what currently poses the biggest threat um you have one more and uh the other one is uh what is my best way through this like how would i i guess help okay. the most people yeah, so, you know, you are able to look around and quickly assess. You don't see any, like, pooling gasoline. Um, you don't see any sparks flying. Um, you see movement inside. Um, you're, you see through the windshield the person that you, you know, know as the driver, a member of the congregation, is like having a fit um you know to you it might look like they're having a seizure and um the rest is it's hard to see in um you probably think that the most important thing to do now is help people out to make sure that they're safe if the doors are opening great if they're not i pull out my car keys and like smash the window open with like the point of my key um you know, trying to get it open. Um, I guess the person who looks like they're in medical distress is the person I'm going for first. Not okay. Not even calculating that they could be, you know, like having a divine. Thing. Right, right. Of course not. So um, you smash. Uh, so you you run to the the van. You hit the, you know, the doors are not opening. Uh, you hit to uh, smash the the windshield. Um, and you and you want to pull out this person that's like having a fit. Roll to act under pressure. Okay. And would this be acting on the information? Do I have a plus? Yes. One? Okay. So you have a plus one to your roll. So I did, did you? Add, I didn't add it. It didn't. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be a fourteen. Yep. All right. So a fourteen is a partial success. So you do it, and um, you are able. So. I'll say this. You can pull this person out. Uh, but it may injure you or the driver. So if it's the driver, I'm okay with it. My character is definitely not going to try and hurt himself in the process. Like, I'm okay. not going to enter a harmful situation. But if it's, if it's accidentally hurting the driver, I will... I will be okay with that. <laughs> okay. As you, like, pull the driver... I mean, you know, you're you're not, a, like, trained EMS or whatever. You're not a firefighter. You're doing your best. You grab the person out. Their head is, like, lolling. You hear their, their like, recitation of this, like, bizarre prayer. Um, you know, you're, you've been... You've been a college educated, right? Like you don't recognize this as like Greek or Latin or, you know, it just like, it seems like they're saying words. It doesn't sound like typically what someone sounds like when they're seizing. Um, their head is lolling. Their head smashes against the side of like where you smash the windshield and a shard of glass just like becomes fully embedded in their eye as you pull them out. Okay. Um, do they stop moving after that, or...? Uh, no. They're still seizing, still reciting. Okay. Uh, let's take a beat. Hold on. Beat. So, uh, Freya and Willow, you're in this, um... You're in this car, uh, I mean, in this van. It's flipped. Uh, uh, airbags probably went off in the front. Uh, the driver... Are you are kind of coming to your senses you hear the front of the van you hear the the windshield smash willow you come to uh and freya you come to freya you're probably a little bit less like loopy so you can act first okay um she's gonna look around try to get her bearings because she is shaken up and doesn't really understand what just happened. Um, when she looks around, she notices that Willow is probably in considerable pain. Um, can she, like, investigate to see, like, what would be the best way to help or how she should proceed? Yeah, you can roll to observe a situation or to investigate. Well, let's observe a situation. Failure. 
ask a question, but you may have to pay for it. All right, I'll ask a question. Um, what poses the biggest threat? Like, as she's looking around, is there anything? Well, that... you see that Willow's been injured and that Willow needs immediate medical attention. Like, okay. his their arm is broken. Okay, yeah, so... I think just out of instinct, she would call and like start dialing nine one one, not knowing what else to do, and just like, "Fuck, car needs to be righted. Willow needs medical attention." Brea, roll for obsession. Of course. <laughs> Let's see obsession. Okay. I'm going to take and use a hold right now. You are dialing 911. The operator is on the line. 911, what's your emergency? Your brain is like flooded with doubt and worry you think about the gaps in your memory and as you're trying to put together the words to say I've been in a car accident I'm uh, my you know my friend my cousin is injured we need an ambulance. All that you can think about is the terror of of forgetting. And so as you answer the operator's questions, you stammer, you hesitate, and you give the wrong location. You give a location that's a couple of miles up the road. You don't realize it. Willow. I think, oh, go yeah, on. Go ahead, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, while that's all happening, she's also starting to doubt, like, what she saw or what she thinks she saw and is wondering if this is another instant of, you know, a gap in memory. Yeah. Willow, you come to, you see that smashing windshield. Um, you hear your uh, cousin on the, your, not cousin, I'm sorry, your um, student. Student. On the phone. <laughs> Um, I was wondering. I was like, "Did I miss something? Are I'm we so related? Sorry. That's not I'm ethical." So I'm like, I'm like no, trying to, to like keep track of the relationship stuff. There's a lot yeah. of it, you know. All right, so it was a lot easier when everybody was siblings for the sibling game. I I right. think we should probably follow that up. Okay. Anyway, so you um you come to smashing windshield. Uh, Freya's on the phone calling 911 you're looking around your arm is in fucking agony what do you do do i notice that freya is giving me incorrect information or am i too loopy um i mean have you ever broken a limb i have yes <laughs> what, do you, well, what do you think do you yeah. think you would notice <laughs> So I, I feel that I would not. So when I broke my wrist, I was on a trampoline. And all I remember is no longer being on the trampoline and having a broken wrist. So I feel like I would I would not <laughs> remember yeah. in the moment or know in the moment that the wrong information was given. Yeah, for sure not. So so I would, um, however much of this I can do, you let me know. Mm -hmm. But I want to turn off the, the van if it's still running. And then I want to, if there's an emergency exit, I kind of want to start, like, 
very poorly making my way towards that emergency exit. Um, okay, well, let me see. You go ahead and act under pressure, uh, but we're going to give you a situational modifier of negative two because of your, cool. you know, situation. Go ahead and roll to act under pressure. Failure. <laughs> that is with the minus two, so. So you um, are able to turn off the um, turn off the van as you're crawling forward to like turn off the van. You notice that like the sight that greets you is uh, James dragging the driver like off out of the van and onto the ground, and the driver's like right eye is just this like explosion of gore and Uh. that disturbs you so you're like ah and it makes it that much more difficult for you to get to like kick your way out the door or whatever um Mm -hmm. roll to avoid harm These games are really just me bludgeoning Cody into oblivion. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. I don't think you control the roles. <laughs> I, I know. No. That's, no. I, I don't That's the hard to. part. Like, I, was gonna, to. I was gonna say, if you want some help, um, I can try and you know extract them from the vehicle as well. And just no, track, that's okay. That's and okay. They, <laughs> and blind them too. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I already can't see out of my right eye. I don't need my left taken as well. Oh no! Okay, Willow, you um, uh, like as you're uh, you know, trying to get out, uh, you will receive um. Oh, go ahead and roll to endure injury, and take one harm. Much, um, one. one. Okay. Oh, wait, that's the wrong one. Oh, injure injury, right. Yeah, my bad. Real quick, jokes aside, I do want to make sure, like, Willow didn't see me, like, pull the driver's face through glass. That's just, like, ugh, I don't want to be blamed for that. <laughs> no, 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 you don't, you don't see the okay. act of pulling. You, he just sees the injury, Got which it. is disturbing. He doesn't know to blame it on you. Okay, okay, okay. You're like, okay, okay, as long as I won't be blamed. So, um, (laughs) you receive lacerations from, like, just broken glass and whatever. Cool. Um, Okay, okay. and you uh, make it out. Freya, you can crawl out. It sounds good. Is there anybody else in the van? No, I think it was just us. Um, It it was just you two uh, heading to, you know, to dinner or whatever and the driver um and just kind of like as soon as it started the driver seizing stops and you hear just a howl of pain and we'll take a beat and we will check in with josh and ethel Josh, you're seeing Ethel uh, convul... <laughs> I found him like that. <laughs> James, probably. <laughs> oh, fucking Liz. Okay. <laughs> uh... <laughs> hey, hey, listen, I, I was just trying to help, and his face went... Oh, was, Liz. He was doing a dance, and Bless. that's all. Who put that windshield there? Uh, okay, so Josh, you know you're seeing your, you know your yeah. landlord and uh, Rumi, Ethel. Like, look, I mean, to you it seems like she's seizing. There's like a weird, you know, you know, you're 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 noting that this group has weird religious, you know, proclivities. So it's like, okay, she's doing like the weird chanting stuff. As she seizes, everybody else in the car seems paralyzed. There's, let's say, another, you know, three or four um, parishioners in there. 
and they're looking at Ethel like with terror. Um, nobody acts. The driver looks back and goes, "Hey, well, what's what's going what's going on back there? What do you do, Josh?" I imagine he starts like panicking. That he's not prepared for any of this. Like all of his prepper stuff is supposed to happen at home. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he doesn't Go have ahead. his bags. He doesn't have his like his right. stuff. Like right. he's just not ready for this, and is like not. He talks a big game when he's like talking to his friends online, but like shit's happening right now, and he's just like hyperventilating and shaking, <laughs> and just like well, we'll like, to keep it prob- together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Partial success. Okay. So he's more scared. All right. Go and ahead and just, take like, your uh, stability. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Don't yeah. even have to tell you. You're ready. I got You're you. Ready. I got okay. you. So. Um, Ethel's eyes um, kind of like lock with yours. She digs her hand into your arm. She's chanting. She's like squirming and seizing. Um, nobody is, nobody else in the car is doing anything. Nobody's doing anything. Nobody's like saying, stop the car. She's having a seizure. The driver is like, what? what, what? What's happening? Huh? Oh, uh, uh I don't, I don't know. I think it's... Uh, she it doesn't seem okay. What What? What the hell? The driver... Maybe you should pull over. Pulls over. <laughs> it's like you kind of say it as it's like happening. Right. And um, he... You know, the... Somebody mutters like, Should we... Should we call 911? Is this... Is she okay? It's like people Uh, feel nervous. Should we, like, get her out of the car? Should we... I don't know. Should you... Like, there's this, like, uh, kind of, like, brown-haired, modest, uh, young woman um, looking terrified. I don't... I don't know. I mean, should we even touch her? I I don't know. Do do we need to put, like, a bit under... in her mouth? So she doesn't... I got a wallet. She pulls his wallet out. We stick that in her mouth, right? I've seen it on uh, one of them CSIs, I think. These people hey. do not know what CSI is. And <laughs> do you try to shove that in her mouth? No, he's he's too scared to do it himself. Oh, okay. He's trying to hand it to someone else to do it for him or tell him not to do it. He <laughs> Okay, one of the men is like, well... Seems it's uh yeah yeah we should we should do that yeah you you said you saw that in some medical like a medical medical it's and like he a just cop show. holds Ethel down as she's seizing yeah he forces her <laughs> mouth open yeah. it's the horrible and thing. shoves the wallet into her mouth <laughs> poor Ethel jeez um Ethel uh there's like beats like you're seeing her kind of it seems like she kind of ex- <laughs> this is not protocol <laughs> oh it's, so, it's so bad it's so bad <laughs> this is the exact opposite for anyone who's watching the exact opposite of what you do holding them down and shoving things in their mouth is so dangerous <laughs> the the fit ends just as it started yeah uh, poor Ethel you know her the bottom like half of her face is just kind of like trickling with like drool and snot and like mm-hmm. a little bit of blood and you she violently spits out your wallet <laughs> but it's like she doesn't even fucking like register that I saw it. Sorry, you uh, saw what? She locks eyes with you again. Joshua, I saw his kingdom. Which kingdom? One of the looky-loos. You went up? 
one of the look you lose says the the kingdom of god the kingdom of heaven yes i saw it with my own eyes there's like a golden gate and everything a golden gate joshua such things are of the world I saw all of our family going generations back prostrate in exaltation hallelujah <laughs> we're surrounded the other people there <laughs> like they're the woman who was frightened her eyes are like brimming with tears. Ethel, what do you mean? You. Sandra, I've had a revelation from, from God, from the Lord. The two women embrace each other and tears just spill out. Um, the men kind of awkwardly to the side. Revelation is typically a man's game around here. Well, seems like now them revelations come in man, woman, or whatever the fuck's in between, I guess. Now, huh? God's going to speak to them all, huh? The men look concerned. Hmm. They're coming for our premonitions now. Uh, we'll take a beat. Marsha. Yes? A similar experience unfolds in the van with you, except it's two men that similarly um begin to seize begin to utter you are not an educated woman you didn't go to college right right or did you oh that's a good question probably that'll make everyone answer at some point did you complete high school yes okay so you know like you don't like you you have an idea that like the language that's being spoken is weird like it's not it it's it doesn't strike you as like a regular human language but then again you don't know it could be and the people around you look concerned the driver pulls over um there's um, driver pulls over uh, they kind of drag out the the seizing congregants and put them on the on the ground to finish out the seizure they call 911 call an ambulance What are you doing while all of this is going on? Oh, I'm video recording with myself. Oh. <laughs> as soon as they would have started like speaking in tongues, I would have been like, oh, what's happening? Oh, and then pull out my phone and start recording. I love that. <laughs> the, um, the congregation has like its own sort of internal uh, churchgoer only social media. It's kind of like in the old days of like, what was the Google one where like only like seven people had it or whatever? <laughs> Google you know, Plus. Uh, Google Plus, right? It's like only, you know, the congregants have this like social media platform. It kind of looks like a knockoff Facebook or MySpace or whatever. Probably, it pro it's probably just MySpace but like slightly rebranded. Um, yeah, it's called Sweatspace. 
Oh, sweat. Sweet, I'm sorry, sweet space. Oh, maybe sweet for the sweet space. creeks. I'm looking at the title of the church. Sweet creek. Okay, sweet space. Sure, I like that. And um, you know, you could just start <laughs> uploading. Oh, a live. Oh, yes, I would do a live. A live. A live stream. <laughs> a live got stream. the fucking bandwidth on their servers to do a live stream. I love that. Uh. Marsha, holy shit the uh your 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 stream is like goes church viral every person in the or in the organization is like tuned in and they see from beginning to end the whole process the calling of the ambulance the the folks that are seizing coming to um and even uh yeah the, them coming too and then they're all having different messaging though carl one of the men that you are videotaping marcia is not He isn't ecstatic with sanct like sanctified glee. He looks terrorized. And you capture in your stream his tears. I mean he's like a tough forty year old trucker type with a lined face, um, kind of like burly, um, calloused hands, and he's weeping. And he's saying, I saw them spilling out from the earth. from a fissure between the pines a smoking ruin of a home and misshapen devils pouring out from underneath the ash The other man uh, is similarly disturbed, but he describes an end. Uh, a barren waste where Dallas Fort Worth once stood. an irradiated plane. With no one to grieve the fall of its earthly glory. After hearing them talk about demons rather than angels, she's going to stop the live stream. Oh, okay. So you're like, oh, this is too dark. Clip. This is not heavenly. This is something else. Oh, okay. I'm gonna not with it. Well, you, um, you know, the stream has uh, spread. People are like downloading it. Um, cool. You are, oh wait, oh Marsha, you're, okay, so you see um, in this stream that like somebody links you to on your phone, like one of the 
fellow congregants or that mm-hmm. comes up on your feed because I imagine, you know, you've probably got it. Everyone's kind of expected to like say happy birthday to each other on, on the feed, right? Um, Cole, you see a video of, um, you know, you like see Marsha's face. Marsha's like, hey, everybody, like here we are. There's, you know, faith and stuff happening. And then, like you see Jenny in the background, like v- looking very worried and concerned about people on the ground. And then these dark premonitions sort of like spilling out. And then Marsha cuts the feed. What do you This do? is happening from inside the van? Uh, no, at this point. So you you're able to see like stuff happening in in the van the van pulls over Mm -hmm. and people are pulled out of the van and onto the ground outside in the heat what are you thinking what are you doing um i would grab up kaylee and throw her in my baby backpack (laughs) oh my god don't throw your baby Oh, okay. you know. You're going to put your baby in the backpack. Got yeah, it. and then we would hoof it towards, like, we know where the, the route is. It comes pretty regularly. Yeah. So I would hoof it towards that area. Okay, to pick up Jenny. To see if she's okay. See what's, what, what's, what's happening over there. Okay. You get a phone call from Jimmy. So he's panting as he answers the phone. He stops for a second. He answers the call. Call. Have you seen it? Did you see the video? Yeah. I'm heading towards you now. Okay. I want to see you as soon as possible. Do you have the baby? Yes. Okay. She's here with me. It was... It's so real, Cole. I've never seen something this real. This true. Uh, Were you hurt? No, no, no. Nobody's hurt. They're... There's a dark future coming. They saw it. And I... I believe they saw it, Cole. They had to have. Are are you sure you weren't hurt? You don't sound like yourself. You're scaring me. You had to have been here. I felt it. I felt... Something. Just, just stay put. I'm coming. And he would start running with the, with the, with Kaylee on his back in the phone. Out. Doesn't sound good. You've all experienced something very strange. Eventually, ambulances show up everywhere, even at the car crash. The um, Did we call an ambulance for Ethel? Eventually, someone would. Oh, wait, Ethel. Why would we? No. She's fine. Not. She's fine. She's covered in slobber. Probably yeah. feels bad, but we didn't <laughs> do anything. She would know. She's fine. <laughs> yeah, Ethel's fine. Hallelujah, baby. She saw God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ethel feels great. Yeah, I, I imagine we keep going. <laughs> keep going. Or did we see the other car flip? No. No. So, like, yeah, we just keep going. There's no ambulance coming for us. We all get back in the van like nothing fucking happens. 
<laughs> talk about this great miracle that we just but, experienced. But the people around you in the car yeah. are starting to receive notifications of uh, Miss uh, Marsha's stream hmm. and of the accident. Um, so maybe you you there is no ambulance at the roadside, but um, eventually, especially because of Ethel's advanced age, some like meddler, you know, calls like adult protective services to the house. <laughs> okay. Um, there's that there's ambulances for people who were hurt um there's an ambulance that arrives uh where marcia and jenny were and you know ems generally is like you fuckers are probably uh dehydrated like it's the middle of the texan summer you need to be hydrating like, you can't just be riding around these roads, you know, drying out and going loony. Make sure you get your, your, you know, make sure everyone's got a water bottle um, and back up. With the exception, of course, of Willow, who is taken to a, a clinic um, and who is put in a cast and get stitches. <laughs> Willow, I think, is mostly sad that they've missed dinner. <laughs> you, um, you are able to extrapolate that there were only three vans where this happened. No other groups going home were impacted. Um... Oh, oh shit, the man with the eye. Yeah, I was wondering about him. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I kind of Fine. forgot about him. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll call him... Mario. Mario, unfortunately, does have to stay overnight at the hospital. I would say so. Um, but everybody else who experienced uh, everyone else who um, experienced or witnessed one of these events is being quote unquote invited for dinner at the home of um, Melvin and Ayeli Young by order of Isaiah Culver. So it is probably getting late, like seven, nearing to be like 7 p.m., right? Um, most folks probably haven't had much to eat in the time uh, 
since breakfast. Uh, everyone has been through a little bit of trauma. Um, James, you, um, you know, the, the ambulance shows up, they take Mario away, they take Willow away, Freya, are you staying or going with them? Freya would probably go with them just because she's really concerned. James, are you staying or going? Oh, I'd leave. Uh, I would check with the EMTs beforehand just to make sure everything's under control and, um, you know, give them my statement if they ask for it and not. Okay. I'm just going to wander back onto the road. Okay. And um, I'll be honest, with that having happened, I don't know if my character, without being kind of, like, told again, would remember he was invited to dinner. Like. Oh, oh, you're definitely being reminded. Okay, if he's... Uh, like the so you you all get the feeling that the people in charge are tracking this and you are noting like you're getting this kind of like form message like you're expected to be here for dinner on at x time i guess james would be like yeah fine but, like, do I know who else is invited off of that, like, listing, or is it just individual to me? There's no listing. It's individual to you. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. But it seems very, like, like, there's no, like, hey, James, you know, like, it was great seeing you, like, you know, it, it seems weird to you. Oh, like, yeah. you're, you're suspecting, like, it has something to do with the accident. Sure. And with... Like now that you're seeing on, uh, sweet. What do we call it, Andy? Sweet space. Sweet space. Like you're seeing on your, on your church phone, like this crazy shit that Marsha, you know, like it is uh, streaming. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that like I probably just see like the the notification for it, mm -hmm. and like like it immediately because like, i'm expected <laughs> to like like it and like you know yeah. like, like, entertain it but then i like i look at the video and realize that like the background's kind of weird in the like loading picture watch it and then i'm like unlike <laughs> <laughs> just because it'd be weird to like like yeah because demons yeah and then yeah he'll go Okay, so uh, Freya, you're going to the hospital with uh, Willow. Um, Cole, you pick up Jenny. Yep. Uh, I would run up to her where she is. Um, and is she still on the ground or? No, no. Well, Jenny was not. She she did not have a uh, right, a, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So she's not on the ground. Okay. She's um, you know, you see her. Her eyes are like red from crying. Um, she, Cole, I, I, I have to tell you, I really felt something, something visceral before they had their visions it's really something really special happened i can't explain it but it happened are you are you sure you're not dehydrated She looks super fucking offended. I know. Okay, 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 I'm sorry. This is just a lot. I don't understand. Some dark future, you said? Should we be scared? I don't want to 
I mean, let's not be like Josh, right? What? Like Josh? What are it, you isn't, talking Isn't about? he the prepper? Out of character, isn't he the prepper? No, the prepper is Willow. Oh, gosh, never mind. And then he wouldn't... Uh, actually, he might say... Well, yeah, your cousin is Willow. Oh, Josh. Wait, Josh is the prepper, but you don't know Josh. But Willow Josh. is also a little bit into that scene. Like, I, I've just got, like, safety food and water stores. That That's right, basically right. it. Yeah, but, but Willow okay. is also the one that spot the Kool-Aid, like, drank the Kool-Aid more than okay, anyone. 100%. Yeah, more than most people, okay. you know. Okay, okay. Anyway, yeah, so... No, okay. Cole, if you had been there, if you had felt that moment, that strange moment before they had their visions, you would know. You you would you would get it. Look, just forget it. Let's just go home. I'm I'm exhausted and we've got to go to dinner with uh Nayeli and Melvin in a few hours. Uh, it's late. Uh, Kaylee is going to need to go to sleep. This isn't optional. We have to go. Nay uh, Kaylee can sleep over there. Okay. Something important. I do want to. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Just no. as I'm in the ambulance before they like morphine me up or whatever sure i just want to send like a like a garbled doesn't make a whole ton of sense sex up freudian slip uh text <laughs> to cole and just be like hope you're okay oh boy okay bad okay so he as he's sort of picking up um you know, helping uh, Jenny to sort of compose herself as he starts to, I guess, walk home. He's looking at his phone, and he's like, oh, gosh, another thing. And he sort of puts it into his pocket for now. I don't... Okay. He says, okay. Cole and Jenny walk home. Mm -hmm. Um... Marsha, there's this flurry of activity. Um, you have been witness to one of the most important things to happen at the church, probably in decades, uh, in a century even. And, you know, you are accumulating likes on sweet uh sweet space um more than i mean you're getting more attention messages hey hon are you okay and um this is incredible i can't believe this is happening in our lifetime and all kinds of attention to you Um, the van guy lets you know that, you know, he can take you home, but that you'll be expected at Melvin and Ayeli's house later. She's going to feel like she's in trouble for the video. Does she... Okay. And the reason being is when they were speaking on their visions, they weren't speaking as if they saw God. They were speaking as if they saw demons. Mm -hmm. So to her, she's like, I don't know what they're witnessing. It wasn't a good... It didn't sound like a good thing. Yeah. It sounded like a very bad thing. And so she posted it and, you know... They're going to be like, you shouldn't have posted that. It's going to make our church look bad and stuff like that. Sure. So she, even though she's getting praise from everybody about how exciting mm -hmm. that is, mm -hmm. then, you know, then it's like, okay. But then the pastors are like, you need to come to dinner. And she's never been to one right after this. So she's like, oh, great. Okay. 
it's bad. Um, I just mm-hmm. want to interject. So, James would have walked home and probably had time to like you know do stuff. Um, obviously mm-hmm. finishing up um, on some stuff, but I think he would write down like with the best of his memory if he's able to kind of recollect what he <laughs> heard the driver say besides the uh, uh from you know the being stabbed in the eye, um, and like kind of try and just jot that down. Okay, yeah, so um, we left of, uh, so my apologies, we left, uh, there was a beat of like, he, the driver comes to, and then starts screaming in pain, and then the pain subsides, and he starts babbling about his vision. It was like. Unfortunately, you probably won't be seeing much anymore. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, um, uh, 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 it was like. I know that they tell us angels look a certain way. You're gonna be okay. Uh, You're gonna be okay. Just whatever you gotta say, you say it, okay? James, what I saw was inexplicable. Yeah. Like like a hundred wells pits spread out over a field but I didn't feel afraid it was like inside of each pit was an eye well, I guess if I saw something like that, I'd probably drive the car off the road, too. Um, okay, well, you just, uh, you, I'm, you calm down, okay? They got the ambulance coming. It's going to be okay. And um, kind of not sure what to do about the glass in the eye. Like, he'll listen to anything else <laughs> he has to say. But I think at the same time, too, he's probably pulling out his notebook and not only is he writing down what he just said, but he's also trying to phonetically write down the words that he was saying before James dragged him out. Like he's playing it back in his head and trying to recite the language that's not quite a language that he doesn't mm-hmm. recognize and phonetically kind of jot that down too. So roll, um, like roll an investigation check just like as a like a reason like to sort of see what you can reason out okay okay it's a success so you can uh, you can ask the questions or i can just give you what i'm gonna give you if you got what you got you give it okay so you um like i don't have the like this like the syllables for you right now but I can give that to you. Well, he's going to hit it yep. up in Google Translate later, so if it is a real language. <laughs> okay. So um, James is able to make note of, like, what the syllables sound like. Okay. And I'll give you more on that later. Sounds good. And then, um, yeah, what he said about the field filled with pits and eyes in each of the pits. Um, yep. And then he's going to check, like, because it sounded like um, Willow and... Um, uh, Freya got out on their own. He'd kind of check with them, and then once the ambulance finally arrived, he'd kind of like make sure everybody's okay. Do what he could to kind of help with the bleeding of the eye, knowing not to pull the eye 
like the shard out of the eye, but like also not knowing what the fuck to do about <laughs> the eye. <laughs> uh, but like doing his best, you know, doing his best. And then, like I said, he'd leave. He'd jot everything down more thoroughly, kind of put that to possibly a story for Monday, and then kind of get ready for dinner with um, the cult leader. I mean, the the pastor, <laughs> or at the pastor's behest. Beautiful, perfect. Josh, you and Ethel are dropped off at her place. Um, you know, typically you'll help her in, settle in. Um, both of you have been notified that you're expected at uh, the young household later. You have a couple of hours to rest. Um, there is like a brief 20 minute visit from an adult protective services investigator who's like, okay, this is just some weird religious thing, uh, whatever, I'm out. And, um, she does leave her card, you know, just in case. Um, Ethel sits down in the kitchen at the kitchen table across from you Joshua you are so lucky blessed and fortunate do you realize that Josh, you around? Zach? He might be muted. I don't know. Zach, you muted? <laughs> okay, so we'll uh, leave a beat for Zach and Josh. Um, everybody has a couple of hours before, uh, dinner. Um, you know, you'll be picked up probably 30 minutes before you're supposed to be there. Um, James, you kind of shared how, you know, you'll go home, you'll start processing, like, this information in terms of, like, writing it up, maybe this is gonna be published, um, or uh, broadcasted on your wait on your show, right? Uh, no, not the Sunday stuff. Like, cause it's huh. I pre-tape it on Saturday and then I air it on Sunday afternoon after church. Okay. Um, yeah, no, it, it's going to be for the Monday. Monday paper. Yeah. Oh, the Monday paper, right? So uh -huh. you're preparing for the Monday paper. Um, you um, is there anything else you? Would okay, so let me, I guess, let me speed it along a little bit. Um, go ahead, um, go ahead and roll another investigation. Yeah, you got it. Uh, partial. Okay. You. You are able to recall all of the syllables of, you know, that, that your, um, that Mario was kind of like uttering, um, during his, his fit. It doesn't match any language, living or dead, that you can identify, that you can research. Um, so, but, I... okay, go ahead. but it scream.
scratches this part of your brain in a way that feels weird. It like, you know, you you were smart to make note because there is this like faint memory associated with it. A memory that you link to Freya. But it's hard to say what or how or when. And it it feels scary to even think about it. You can learn more, but it will be at a cost. Okay. Um, so will the cost be something that I'm aware of? Because it, it has like some options kind of listed there, or is that just something that... Um... You can choose one of these questions. Mm -hmm. um, the cost... Um, I guess you kind of yeah. answered the second question already for me. Okay. Is, what is, is there anything gut, weird? What or what? Or was your feeling? gut feeling? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I figured it was related to the kind of weird crossover that Freya had. Because mm -hmm. it was... This was... As someone who kind of in the back of their mind has seen something that is kind of more what I consider divine or some sort of strange mm -hmm. supernatural connection, the people yeah. kind of doing the song and dance at church are obviously not... They're not cutting it <laughs> uh, for right. me, I guess, the best way to say it. Um, right. So I guess you kind of already answered that question for me. So, again, gotcha. I just wanted to know, like, do I know what the cost is? Like you said before, like, on... Um... So, yeah, I guess I was generous. Yes. Um, so you can have more. Ooh, okay. The cost is that the cost is that it will draw the attention of something to you, whether it's the church or or else. Or, or, or something else you are not a hundred percent sure. Okay, then I want my second question. How can I find out more about what I'm investigating? Obviously, like, when it first happened, it was probably, you know, not entirely language-rooted, but I do have an understanding, like, I don't know the language, I don't think I can find the language, but I think I know who can, and it's church-related. Is that fair to assume, or no? No. Okay. So, let me answer your question. Sure. And you're... So, and you're willing to pay the cost for it? Yeah. Okay. So, you know that... So, okay. So, let's go back. So, the cost is that you will need to show your hand to a... Um... Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. The cost is that some... Like, that, it, that you will draw attention. Okay. So, anyway. So, the information... Or, or, like, you know you can find out more um, by helping Freya recover more of her memories. As you shape that in your mind, you feel this, like, thrum. Like, that weird sound from, like, CSI SVU where it goes like dun dun like you feel that like in your spine and there is a logical and reasoning part of you that might recognize it as like a chill or like ASMR but there's a part of you that knows better yeah. something has noticed you yeah, I don't know what I'm playing with here, but I understand that, right. like, I believe in stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'm not, not, this isn't Nico. So, yeah, okay. Um, I think in his brain, like, 
he's not sure whether or not or who's going to dinner tonight but he knows that um, tomorrow probably sometime during the day he'll try and contact Freya if he doesn't run into her before then right. and um, I'll tuck the uh, I'll tuck the uh, parchment I'll like, tear it from my journal and I'll kind of tuck that into my wallet in my kind of coat pocket so a thought that is sort of like like a core idea here, a core theme here, um, that I think we're seeing in James' story too, is that when you're in a cult or in a high control org or, or church or whatever, even having the wrong thought is dangerous. And your experience in this moment, James, is that having the wrong thought was kind of dangerous. So I think, like, obviously he's subconsciously aware that there's buried shit in his head. Like, there's mm -hmm. more to it, right? Like, yeah. I think he's kind of a cunning enough guy to, like, understand there's gaps. Um, but I think at this point, like, I mean, he's too stupid not to follow the lead. Uh, but I think that's that's the main thing about him. So he's going to probably it might come up at dinner. Like it's that it's that he's that dumb about it. Like he understands like just thinking those thoughts is bad. But like, you know, this is church related. It was the church driver who was saying it. You know, it's yeah. um, you know that's the situation. And like, it's important for the church too. It's important for the community. Yeah. So let's take a beat to Freya and Willow at the hospital. Um, I, Shijo, have never broken a bone. I don't plan on it. Knock on wood. Um, Wouldn't recommend it. I am an inside cat. Um, so Willow, uh, you're getting your bone mended. Uh, however, it is that you know medical people mend a bone wrapping it in a cast or whatever the heck um, after doing like a CAT scan or whatever that takes up a lot of your time you know you don't have to as much time as like some of the other folks to like I don't know Google dead languages or whatever um, you have Freya Freya are you kind of just hanging in the um, hang in like in the waiting room kind of like keeping up with willow yeah just kind of hanging out a little bit just feeling like she needs to see this through okay. i was gonna say i feel like that'd be willow's preference because like even though we're in the same congregation like a student seeing you in a hospital dressing gown is not the best look so definitely out in the waiting room that's kind of hot <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you're into that. So, Freya, go ahead and roll for obsession. Okay. Well, oh, that no. didn't work. I'm going to take three hold. You um, have been sort of protected by your adrenaline, right? Like scary accident, Willow's got a broken arm. Um, you know, uh, James was tending to like this poor guy whose eye got fucked up who knows how um you know it's um it was all very frightening and disturbing and now you have a beat to breathe and all you can think about is how those utterances, those bizarre and human, and yet 
language like syllables bring you back What do you do? So I feel like she would have, she would normally carry around like a, some sort of backpack or, you know, something to carry her books in. Sure. So there's probably like a, some notebook paper in there. I think she would start scrawling out like kind of just syllables if she could pick any out. That she could remember. Your obsession is so razor sharp that you easily pick out various syllables. And with every one that you kind of like snatch out of your memory, you feel like. this locked it's like there's this locked chest inside of your brain and with every syllable it's like another turn on the combination lock click 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 but you're not quite there it doesn't quite open I feel like as she's scribbling, like her writing is getting like more and more scribbly, more and more mm -hmm. nonsensical mm -hmm. as she's just trying to like figure out what's going on, trying to feed, you know, her obsession. You uh, continue to do that for an hour. Um, as it gets closer and closer to um, dinner with the youngs. Uh, Zach, are you back? Yes. Okay. Um, Ethel sits you, uh, you're sitting across the kitchen table with Ethel. Um, the adult services worker came and went 20 minutes, left you her card in case whatever. Anything happens or anything she, happens again, yeah. Right. She assumes that it was just typical, you know, m mid Texas spiritual uh, fervor. Mm -hmm. um, she's certainly no uh, stranger to. Um, that kind of like hap you know kind of spiritual happening around these parts um, and Ethel you know asks you to sit with her and have a cup of tea mm -hmm. or a coke or whatever you desire you know you prefer oh I imagine he's like sweet tea or water only a sweet tea sure oh Ethel Ethel makes a mean sweet tea right Joshua, you are so fortunate, blessed, to have joined the congregation on the uh, during the time that you did. Why is this time any different than other times? Oh, Joshua. Revelations. You seen you seen them, right? All on your phone. I I seen them, but there's something else, Ethel. This means the church is true, Joshua. This means this is the church that will lead us to salvation and everlasting life. Yeah. 
Yeah. Maybe it is. He smiles at her. You don't believe it. Well, not everyone saw what you saw there, Ethel. Yes, but Mario, he saw devils and as I look at my notes, and Carl. Uh, I'm sorry, Carl. No, no. Uh, Carl saw the devils, and Rainer. He saw the end. It wasn't just me, Joshua. And I know that you felt it. That moment before my vision came. It felt like being a bowl of water. And a ripple done come through. I know you felt it. I felt something, that's for sure. But between you and me, I thought I always believed in the upstairs place, but never the downstairs place. If one's real, then the other one's got to be real too, Joshua. Don't let these liberal Presbyterians tell you that there ain't no under place. Because Carl seen it. He's seen the twisted devilry that comes from there. But if Carl's a believer, why'd he go to the under place? He didn't go there. Just seen it? He witnessed. I it's all too big for me. It's hurting my head. I might need to call in early tonight here, Ethel. Oh. Oh, no, that's not possible, Joshua. We need to go to dinner with the Youngs. We've been invited. Okay, but can we take my truck? I don't know if I trust any of them church fans. You've seen what happened to that other one. Roll to influence another. Failure. Joshua, I let you in my home because I trust that you will trust our church leadership. Yes, ma'am, won't happen again. Takes a drink of his tea looks down at the table, just avoiding eye contact. <laughs> shamed. So hard shamed. And so, the six of you grapple with what it means to live a weekend where a typical you know church day um, turned into a bit of a living nightmare mm -hmm. and next time we will see um, what solace you can find in the kind and loving home of uh, Melvin and Nayeli Young. Thank you, everybody, for uh, Thank you. gathering tonight. Mm, yeah. And uh, we will see you all again 
next week. Robin and Cody, don't leave yet.